おかえりドクター Yo, what's up, Chasm Crew? It's Frost, and welcome to the introduction to Arknights, the complete beginner's guide. So, Arknights, once you enter, there is a shitload of buttons. Alright, let me swap to the game. There is a shitload of buttons, I tell you. So, let's go through them real quick. You have the currencies LMD, used to upgrade your operators, used、uh, for creating stuff in the base. Basically, it's like your gold and Genshin. Next up, we have our randoms. These are used only for pulls. You cannot use them on anything else, only for pulls. It's 600 per pull. Now,、uh, the rate ups and the characters basically is 2% to get a 6 star. That's the highest rarity in this game. And on certain limited banners, you get a free roll every 24 hours and you get a free 10 pull. So a total of、uh, 24 pulls over the two week duration these banners stay. Now, The limited units, as you can see right here, they only appear on these banners. Now, there is only about six of these or something total, if I remember correctly. Every other unit will be added to the default. As you can see, there is a lot of units. Now, Dusk and Neon are limited units, but everything else is a default unit that you can get as off banner. So, there's that. Now we have Originite Primes. Originite Primes, you go into the shop and you can either buy outfits, that's the only use for this, or go into packs and you can buy level enhancement packs. These are the best bang for your buck because They give you the amount of a random that you would have gotten for converting these directly, and you get a bunch of resources. It's really helpful. Or you can use it to get sanity. One will refresh your sanity to full and add it onto what you already have. Then you can just convert these directly into pulls. So I can convert these directly into pulls right here. That's about、uh, three pulls right there from 11 of them. If you want to get more pulls, but I recommend doing that after you buy the stuff that I already mentioned. Like, there's a bunch of links that I'll put in the description. So, if you want to see a skin for an operator you like or, any, like, or anything like that, it'll all be down there. So, there's that. Next up, we have recruit. Recruitment is basically you go in here, there's a bunch of buttons. Recruitment time is the duration. As you can see, The higher the duration, the higher rarities you'll get. So instead of getting one stars to four stars, at four hours, I'll get two to five stars. So if I want to go 350, that's the maximum amount for getting a one star, which is only robots. Now,、uh, for tags, I'll put a recruitment calculator in the bottom. You just click the things, see what you want, you get it. But tags, they will drop off. So, I can be recruiting DP recovery right now, and even after nine hours, I may not get it. The longer the, the duration of the recruitment, the higher chance that it will not fall off. Next up, we have the depot. So, depot is basically just your inventory. Next up, we have the base. So, the base is basically free resources, it gives you stuff. It does stuff that, that's all I'm gonna go into. Next up is workshop. This is the only thing about the base that I'm actually gonna talk about. Go into the workshop, it looks very confusing. You click a character. Once you add it, who has a good passive or something. So, as you can see, I have a bunch of things. So, if you go into upgrade materials, you can. Create stuff to level up your unit. So, if you need these rocks to level up your skills or your characters, go ahead, use that, click it. You can make it.、Uh, of course, it takes their morale. So, the more morale it costs, the, the less the unit will be able to use it. Once their morale is to zero, their passive is useless and you need to swap them out. Okay, next up operators. So, Operators, you have a bunch of units, that's all there is. Okay, so let's go to this. So, when you go to a unit, there is a few things to keep note of. First up, their level. If you, haha, <laughs> 69. If you level them up, their stats will increase. As you can see, it goes from 709 to 710, from level 69 to 70. Their stats increase, and that'll make them bulkier and stronger. Next up is promotion. A unit can only go to promotion level 2. So, promotion level 2 is the maximum and it will give them all the skills that they can get. So, when a unit gets to promotion 
they unlock a new skill and basically they get a new talent. When a unit gets to promotion 2, they basically get uh, the maximum amount of buffs they can, higher level, range increases, all of that. So there's that. Next up, we have the deployment cost. As you can see, when you click attributes, it'll actually tell you what each of these symbols mean. Resistance. This is basically arts resistance. Now, I'll go into the terminology and all of that right now. So, vanguards. Your DP generators, they're there to give you DP so you can place higher cost operators. So, as I've already said, if you click the attributes, you can see the DP cost. Now, let me explain DP. DP means deployment points. That's literally all there is. Guards, they're there for high burst damage, AoE damage. They're just a damage dealer. There's nothing too special about them. They do damage. That, that's all they're here for. Some have extreme burst potential. Some do damage over time. They have a lot of cool things. Defenders, they're basically the bulky wall that you need to have on the front line so your units in the back don't die because not every unit is squi is uh, very strong so they're all very squishy so defenders there's three types there's normal defenders known for beefy defense and three block count block count is how many units they can block before the units get past them use these characters as your last line of defense or your front line so people don't get past and you can just damage them from the back with ranged units there's healing defenders they only have two block count until the first promotion and they can heal themselves or others and they cost a bit less but in exchange they have less defense and hp Enmity de defenders Enmity basically means they can't be healed by conventional means so medics cannot heal them that's it so you have to use special units or special skills that will say restore hp instead so suzerain heals all ally units within range okay so uh it heals them passively now if i go to a medic it says restores now restore means that it will not work on enmity units but heal will work on enmity units so healing works restoring does not work next up specialist Specialist basically have specialties, their own niche. They can be placed or treated again and placed you know, really fast, so fast redeploy. They can uh, push enemies or pull enemies, or they can uh, do, do funny things. Uh, that That's it. Next up, we have snipers. Snipers hit flying enemies or attack enemies from a long range. Not all snipers can hit flying enemies, but generally these are the go-to for taking care of drones or flying mobs. You want to always have at least one sniper so you can hit flying enemies so you don't get hit by surprise. Next up, we have casters. Casters do arts damage. Arts damage does not use the defense stat in calculation, but uses resistance instead. So I'll go more into that later. Next up, we have medics. They heal supporters. What supporters do is they can slow enemies, heal your team, give you attack buff, debuff enemies. Now, if I go into the terminology a bit, uh, sanity is basically your Genshin resin. Basically, sanity, you need it for every level. When you go into a level, if I go here, it says sanity cost minus six. Now, you have sanity, but you also have practice plans. Practice plans, basically you have 30 a day. What it does, it lets you play the game without using sanity. However, the problem is, when you do this, is that if you clear the stage with three stars, it does not actually count. It's just for practice, it's just to make your team and placement foolproof. Now, for some stages, especially high-end boss stages, I sometimes would say don't go practice stages. Just go with your sanity directly because you do not want to do that stage twice, bro. I don't think I wanted to bank upon that RNG on practice mode and then do it again. So yeah, keep that in mind. There, is, It is a double-edged sword. Okay, now when you go to a unit, blue is a good uh, good text it's good okay blue is good okay S stops attacking red is bad it's a drawback so each skill will either have no drawbacks or some drawbacks so please keep that in mind red is bad it's a drawback blue is good 
it's easy. Okay. Okay, next up. So, whenever you're in somewhere, uh, you can hit this home button. And basically, it will make the UI a bit easier. So, we have home, which is the main hub. Squads, which is basically your team building. You can hit quick select to uh, select the squad faster instead of going one by one. And then we have the archives. Basically, this is just the gallery so you can see all the skins, all the units that got skins and see whenever you want them. Intelligence, this is useless. You don't need to give a shit. Enemies, this is nice. If you want to go to an enemy, check their stats. As you can see, they have D, resistance and defense, so anything works on them. But if I go to uh, orange backgrounds, means it's a boss. As you can see, B resistance, C defense, which means do not use magic or arch damage on these things because it will not work. Uh, physical damage is way better. So think of it like that. Basically, archives is useless. You don't need to care about friends, add friends, get support units, whatever. It is what it is. Next up, terminal. So whenever you go into the terminal, there's a bunch of stuff. This is your main story stages. When you click it, it will take you to the main story or the most recent chapter or whatever. Uh, when you click this, it'll take you to the stage that you did last. So and that's useful if you want to go back and farm. Annihilation. What this is, basically really long as hell and hard stages that give you a random. You have a, a random limit every week. It increases the more you 3-star with a maximum of 1,800, so you can basically get 3 pulls a week. Then we have uh, the limited event. If we have a limited event, it will be on this side. Click it. It'll take you directly into the event page. Now, the event page, it does have a lot of buttons. You may see this, you'll be like, what the hell is this? So, okay, let's go over it a bit simply. Every event has the same four buttons, basically. Zing you in. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, basically, you have a shop. You can buy materials. This event is lucky where you can buy a lot of materials for only one sanity each. So basically, four events. Each sanity is converted into one currency. That's basically how every limited event works. And uh, you can just farm the stages, get everything. Every event gives a free unit, or most events do, and you can buy their rank ups in the shop as well. There's the missions. So basically, oh, so if I scroll down here, clear stage one. Once you do that, you get basically bonus points, rewards, whatever. Metal set details, that's basically if you want to get an entire metal set displayed on your profile. So if I go to the home, friends, if I click this, as you can see, I placed my medals here. Basically, it looks cool. That's really all it is. Okay. And then if we go here on this side, it won't always be the same placing. So keep that in mind once again. Basically, there will be two parts. Each event has two parts. So there is a first part, which is the default stages. There's boss stages, whatever, everything. And then there's the next part that opens. So in this case, it'll open on the 5th, which is when I'm going to do a live stream. This video will probably go up after the live stream, so keep that in mind. But basically, when you click this, it'll take you to more bonus stages. So if I go to a different event instead, so as you can see, I've cleared the event. And then we have EX stages. Basically, there are more stages, which are way harder. And they have challenge mode. So challenge mode, basically, it gives you another a restriction or whatever and it lets you get another originite prime after clearing it that's literally all it is next up so if you click this button it takes you to the main story basically this is where you want to go for main story intermezzi basically it's just events this side story is side stories which are also events these have some relevance these have no relevance at all they're all useless then we have supplies. You go in here to upgrade your operators with operator chips, get EXP, get money, or shop vouchers. Shop vouchers, if we go into store right now, there's the certificate tab. Now there's a few things. You have green certificates, 
which takes you to the green certificate shop. When you go here, you want to buy headhunting permits and arundums if you want to get as much pulls as possible. And then whatever of these four resources that you need. Do not go to the second stage because the prices here are kind of abysmal. I mean, if you have m more than enough to spare, go ahead and buy these things. But yeah, but for that, you need to buy this, which is 200. So keep that in mind. Token exchange, whenever you get duplicates, uh, you'll get uh, things. There's a rules button here. You can look at it, read it if you need it. And now we have distinctions. Basically, this you only use it for these two things never buy anything else here so you can get a six star operator for free with 180 of these or you can be like me and buy pulls whenever you get the chance although people will recommend do not just buy whenever you get the chance but instead save up 258 to buy the entire thing out in one phase because the discounts increase as it goes on and you will get more out more worth out of it then we have purchase certificates basically you can use this to buy free units after the first copy don't buy more but just use it for chip catalyst that's really the only useful thing then headhunting data contracts th these are only for limited banners you get one for every single pull you can use it 300 you get a guaranteed six start of your choice from the rate ups or you can use 75 to get a five star don't recommend that because if you don't use them they get converted converted into parametric models and you can use this to buy stuff so if you need extra mats or something you can use it i can buy uh, four of these there we go there's that intelligence certification these are only for event reruns if you've done an event before and it reruns and you do it again you will get duplicates of the same things and those duplicates will be converted into these and you can use it to buy stuff just use it for these bro you just need pulls man that's all you need all right now we'll go into the last main part of the terminal which is contingency contract now this may look very confusing as hell and you may be like what the hell is this so secret sanctuary basically this is the permanent shop where you can just buy stuff when there's a specific uh contingency contract event so cc8 or contingency contract 8 is actually coming up very soon uh we just passed a cc7 but basically when you go to it there will be basically a stage and there will be this will be locked off this section will be locked off so once you clear it basically you will unlock object contingency level one so once you do that you can take like a two three whatever and then once you take two of these your contingency level is two once you reach level 2, you will be able to unlock one of these. And once you reach contingency 4, you will be able to unlock this. And basically, that that's it for this map. So, also, I forgot to mention, but whenever you click on a map, or a stage, you can actually click on details, see the map info, and you can actually see the enemies. The enemies won't actually show up until after you clear the or go into the stage and see them though so do keep that in mind but basically this is just extra challenge it's here to help you learn how to actually do it and give you a bit of a challenge next up let's talk about operator leveling so i will put a game pressed tier list quote unquote in the description you can click on that see what the rankings are for every unit it is pretty good but don't but take it with a grain of salt every tier list is subjective you just go through analyze it use it for your own play style i used hung because i was like bro his voice is hot bro his voice is hot bro let me turn on game sound so you can hear it bro oh god that's loud bro that's loud so let's hear him talk bro Dana. Bro, he's so hot, bro. His voice is sick. I swear I'm not a furry, bro. Trust me. All right. His voice is badass. But basically, it's like, oh, yeah, his voice is hot. So I'm going to use him. But he's shit. And he gets outranked by four stars. Keep in mind, the rarities in this game are very misleading. So we have Myrtle, a four star vanguard. But she is like god she is the god of all gods bro 
but yeah rarities don't mean everything but yeah go to game press just look at the things see what you need uh you you can follow meta if you want you can also follow waifus or whatever designs look badass like bro this skin looks badass man go for whatever your heart desires you don't really need to follow meta like my team if i go into it it is very meta i will admit but that's because i struggled with stages and i decided okay you know what instead of going for characters i like i should start going for characters that i sh that will actually help me boost my power level up and you know let me get through the stages that i'm having difficulties with i level savage up only because her armpit bro that's it but it's like, I'm never gonna use her. I wasted so much resources on this shit. For what reason? For what reason besides I was horny? Like, what the fuck? This, this has no purpose at all. It's gonna do nothing. It's useless. Waste of my resources. Don't recommend it. But hey, you do you. I did me. We're, we're all he out here to play the game anyways. It is what it is.